Hello, everybody. So today we will now discuss another topic in our uh, in our class. We'll discuss differential analysis or uh, analysis of relevant costs and relevant benefits. Okay. We will divide this uh, portion of the course into two lectures. So part one will be this week. Part two will be next week in next week's video. For this week, what we will discuss, right? so in this video, you will learn the following. Uh, number one, identify relevant costs and irrelevant costs and benefit in a decision. Um, I think it's very important to uh, discuss the concept of relevant and irrelevant items in a decision. And by doing so, we're able to narrow down you know, whatever is the most essential elements of a decision, and that is by only focusing on relevant items. And uh, that's what we will be doing in this, uh, in this video. Also, we will prepare an analysis showing whether a product line or other business segment should be added or dropped as an application of relevant and irrelevant costs. We also prepare a make or buy analysis. So essentially, the last two bullet, bullet points are um, applications you know, of identifying relevant and irrelevant costs and benefits in a decision, in a simple decision of a company. Okay? So basically, the, this whole, the next two weeks, we'll be focusing on identifying which items are relevant and irrelevant in a decision and applying them in different contexts of a business. And hopefully, by looking at those contexts, then we're able to um, have a general understanding okay, of what relevant and irrelevant costs and benefits are. And it will allow us to practice of, of identi in identifying you know, which ones are relevant and which ones are irrelevant. So before we proceed, you know, we, we have to define how is relevant information used to make short-term decisions of the company? Okay. First, we need to decide, we need to discuss how do managers make decisions? Okay. Uh, the first thing that uh, you need to do is to define your business goals. You define muna what do you want to achieve. And by defining that business goal, then you identify different ways of achieving that goal. And therefore, you are now identifying different alternative courses of action. No support because, as you know, there are many ways to, to achieve the same business goal. So if your business goal is to maximize profit, there are many ways on how to maximize profit. And even though there are many ways to maximize profit, you don't have enough resources to pursue all of them, right? So therefore, what will happen is that you will have to identify the alternative courses of action and evaluate each of those alternative courses of action so that you can you can proceed with the decision given your constraints or given your whatever given the realities that you're facing so you, are, you are identify the alternative courses of action and then you gather and analyze the relevant information for the for the decision and relevant information contains or includes financial information right so you have to discuss what's the impact, what's the profit impact of this decision. And with that, you should be able to understand or have an overview you know, of the effect on your business goal. And given that you're able to gather and analyze those information, you are now tasked to choose the best alternative. Later, we'll discuss that not, hindi naman palagi profit-driven lahat ng decisions. Some decisions need to be done regardless of the financials, and we'll discuss some of them later. Okay. So what are relevant costs and benefits? So a relevant cost is a cost that differs between alternatives. So if meron kang dalawang alternatives, alternative A and B, a relevant cost is a cost item that is different between the two alternatives. So Alternative A and B, for example, the cost of rental of A is 10,000, of alternative A is 10,000. The cost of rental of B is 20,000. Therefore, rental is a relevant cost because it differs between two alternatives. So, 
If marketing cost, for example, is 100,000 for both alternatives A and B, then we say that uh, marketing cost is not a relevant cost because it does not differ between alternatives. But it does not make or break the decision because it's the same. The amount, the magnitude is the same for the two alternatives. So that cost, marketing cost, is an irrelevant cost. We define a relevant benefit or you know, a relevant benefit is a benefit that differs between alternatives. A classic example of that is sales, for example. Will this bring additional sales or not? You know? So therefore, if, if, if one course of action will bring in additional sales, more likely sales is a relevant benefit because one alternative is zero sales, the other alternative is with sales. And therefore, it differed between alternatives and therefore, it is a relevant benefit. Okay. What's the usual clue or clue or hint that a cost is relevant? A cost is usually relevant, a cost item is usually relevant in decision making if that cost is avoidable. So, what's an avoidable cost? An avoidable cost is the cost that can be eliminated in whole or in part by choosing one alternative over another. Okay. So if choosing A over B, okay, you're able to save 20,000 pesos of electricity, then electricity is a relevant cost because you're able to avoid it. And by avoiding it, we know that the cost of electricity is different between choices A and B. Okay, so avoidable costs are relevant costs. Costs that are unavoidable, meaning will be incurred or will happen regardless of the alternative that you choose. So those are unavoidable costs and those are irrelevant costs in the decision. Okay, so identifying between relevant and irrelevant costs sort of um, simplifies, simplifies our decision making, right? Because by eliminating irrelevant items, then you focus on what's relevant. Okay. What are some two broad categories of irrelevant costs. So there are two basic types of irrelevant costs. One is um, sunk costs are irrelevant. Why are sunk costs irrelevant? They are irrelevant because regardless of doing option A or option B, it has been spent. Tapos na, nagastos na yun. And therefore, whether you pursue option A or option B, it doesn't matter because under both options, you have spent that amount. So that's why you always say that some costs are irrelevant costs, right? Because uh, tapos na, no? It's not cost, so therefore, hindi mo na siya mababang. Okay? Uh, irrelevant costs are also future costs that does not differ between the alternatives and therefore unavoidable. Okay? So therefore, what's the key to a successful uh, decision-making? The key to successful decision making is really to focus only on relevant costs and benefits. Okay, so in focusing for relevant costs, you, know, you are focusing on avoidable costs. You're focusing on differential costs or incremental costs, and you only focus on relevant benefits or incremental benefits of a yeah, of a decision. Okay, can you ignore everything else, which? because those items are irrelevant to the decision. It allow, allows you to focus you know, on what is the uh, proper framework in analyzing these decisions. Now, there are different costs for different purposes. Costs that are relevant in one decision or situation may not be relevant in another. We'll explain that in a moment. Let's have an example. An example here is that Bill has just returned for a duck from a duck hunting trip. So, nagahan siya ng ducks. Okay? He brought home eight ducks. Bill's friend John, who disapproves of duck hunting because, you know, kawawa yung mga duck. And to discourage Bill from further hunting, John presented him with the following cost estimate per duck. Okay? Parang sinasabi niya, wag ka nang mag-duck hunting because ang dami nang ginagastos mo. Bumili ka na lang ng duck sa, sa grocery. Right. Okay, let's focus on the table first of the cost so that we don't get ahead of ourselves. So ito yung costing niya. You know? 
Sabi niya, the cost per duck is around $34. It's very expensive according to uh, John. What are the costs that he imputed? Let's go one by one first so that we familiarize ourselves. Number one, camper and equipment. Bili siya ng camper, which is a, which is a vehicle. The cost of the camper is $12,000. It's usable for eight seasons and 10 hunting trips per season. So therefore, ang ginawa niya, dinivide niya yung 12,000 by eight seasons and each season by 10 hunting trips. So therefore, the cost per hunting trip is $150. Okay. Second, travel expense. No. Uh, each each trip is 100 miles. No. And the rate is 0.31 dollars per mile. And nagagastos niya for travel expenses. Uh, he further divided it into two: gas and oil and tires is 0 0.21, 21 cents per mile. Depreciation in insurance 10 cents per mile. Okay. Next, shotgun shells. Two boxes per hunting trip. So every hunting trip, they use two boxes. The cost is twenty dollars. Boat. Siempre. Uh, I mean, part of the duck hunting trip is you have to use a boat. So the cost is two thousand three hundred twenty, usable for eight season, ten hunting trips per season. So again, they divide by eight, they divide by ten, and it arrives at twenty nine dollars. Hunting license. You need to buy a license if you are hunting. Nakabili na siya ng license, $30 for the season. And it's equivalent for 10 hunting trips per season. So the cost is $3. Also, in every hunting, in the hunting trip, they play poker, right? So Bill usually loses poker. And the, the amount that he loses is $24. However, based on the note, Bill plays poker every weekend, whether he goes hunting or stays at home. Okay. And last, it's bottle of whiskey. Malamig daw sa hunting trip. So they need to drink a bottle of whiskey every trip. That's $15. Therefore, there's the total cost. 272 divided by 8 ducks. And the cost is $34 per duck. Now, the question is, assuming the duck hunting trip Bill has just completed is a typical duck hunting trip. What costs are relevant to a decision as to whether Bill should go duck hunting again this season? So, nakaisang duck hunting trip na sila. What's the relevant cost of going to another duck hunting trip this season? That's the question we are confronting with. Okay. Let's discuss each item one by one and decide whether they are relevant or irrelevant to that question. Okay. Let's look at the camper and equipment. It was already bought for $12,000. So whether Bill goes on another hunting uh, trip this season or not, nabili na yan, $12,000. And therefore, if there's a new trip, he won't incur another $12,000, right? And he won't incur technically another $150. Why? Because it has already been bought. So. It's not relevant because it's a sound cost. You know, it won't change once a new trip is organized. Okay? So therefore, the first one irrelevant in the decision whether Bill should go duck hunting again this season. Second, let's look at travel expenses. For travel expenses, there are two types, gas, oil, and tires. So, natural, kung mag hunting trip ka ulit, you will have to spend again you know, for gas, oil, and tires. If you don't go hunting trip, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't spend on those, on gas, oil, and tires. Hindi ka naman alis. Right? Therefore, it is an incremental cost, and therefore, it is a relevant cost. Okay? Because when you go, when you go duck hunting, you spend for gas, oil, and tires. Next, depreciation and insurance. Okay. Depreciation in insurance based on, on what's discussed here, you know, it will not change regardless of the number of trips because depreciation is not enough. So whether you go to the hunting trip or not, you will, you will have incurred those, that depreciation in insurance. Anyway, you know, and if you go to the depreciation, you will have to pay for insurance. 
nabayaran mo yung insurance regardless of kung dapat na hunting trip na yan o hindi. So therefore, um, travel expense depreciation insurance is itang cost and therefore irrelevant in the decision. Next, next is shotgun shells. Okay. Nagasal ko ba siya ng shotgun shells kung magkitrip siya? Yes. Kung hindi siya magkitrip, wala. Okay? Ang hindi niya shotgun shells, wala siya babarilin. Okay? So therefore, that cost is incremental. And since it's, it's an incremental cost, it is irrelevant cost. Okay? Next is the boat. The boat is a sunk cost, right? Because nabili na yung boat na yan. Right? Whether whether uh, mag next mag mag hunting trip sa ule or hindi tapos na nagastos na yung boat therefore it won't change that cost will not change regardless of the number of trips that he goes uh, or he undertakes therefore the boat cost is irrelevant it's specifically is not cost okay now hunting license the hunting license of course is needed if you need to hunt right no. However, what's different here is the hunting license is good for 10 hunting trips. At hindi pa siya nakaka-10 hunting trip. No. Therefore, yung next hunting trip niya, okay, pasok pa dun sa 10 hunting trips. So therefore, the cost of the hunting license won't change. Okay. So therefore, at this point, the next hunting trip niya, it is still an irrelevant cost. Um, because it's unavoidable, you have spent for it. In fact, it is a sunk cost already. Okay, because you have already spent for it. No? Eh, kung hindi mo gamitin, hindi naman makakatipid. No? Hindi mo ma-avoid yung hunting license because bayad na yan. Okay? Now, there, it's different kung pinag-uusapan natin is 20 hunting trips. Right? Kasi kung 20 hunting trips, Ang pinag-uusapan natin, 10 lang kasi ito eh, good for 10 hunting trips. And so therefore, you have to spend one more hunting license after the 10 hunting trips. Yung additional license for the additional 10 hunting trips, that's a relevant cost, right? No, because um, obviously, it's an incremental cost. Pero since ito ang pinag-uusapan natin is, to go duck hunting again in this season, as far as this season is concerned, you know, bayad na yung hunting license, and therefore, already irrelevant. The cost will not change. Next, money lost playing poker. Okay, so parang sinasabi ni John, natutalo ka sa poker every time na pupunta tayo sa duck hunting trip. But actually, if you look at the story, Bill plays poker every weekend, whether he goes to hunting or stays at home. So therefore, it's a weekly activity for him, regardless whether he will go duck hunting or not. Then it is an unavoidable cost. It is an irrelevant cost. As far as the decision of going duck hunting again this season is concerned. Okay? Kung mag duck hunting siya, natatalo siya dun sa duck hunting. Pero kung hindi naman siya mag-duck hunting, natatalo siya sa bahay, sa poker. So regardless, you do that by the same amount. Next is the bottle of whiskey. It is implied that they only drink a bottle of whiskey due to the cold during duck hunting. And therefore, it's incremental cost. Kung hindi ka giniginaw sa bahay, hindi mo kailangan mag-bumili ng bottle of whiskey. And therefore, it is a, re it is a relevant cost. But it's an incremental cost. It only arises if you go duck hunting. And therefore, that additional bottle of whiskey is, an, is a relevant cost. Okay? So, what are the costs relevant to the decision? Kung isasummarize natin, ito, ito siya. Yung travel costs related to gas, tires, and oil, specifically, that's $21. Shotgun shells in the one bottle of whiskey. And so the relevant cost for one trip is $56 as far as we are concerned. The rest are sunk costs or unavoidable costs. No, na, na, hindi na natin of course, this is a simplistic analysis. No? 
but it just gives you an overview of how to look at relevant and irrelevant causes. So, in fact, let's discuss what other considerations will be relevant but not quantified here. Okay? What may be relevant, pero wala siya listahan. Number one, resale value of the boat, car, and campers. If you use the boat, car, and campers more often, the resale value more baba, right? No? So that could be a consideration that's relevant but may not be quantified. Okay. Maintenance costs. As you do more trips, you need to maintain those boat, cars, and campers, right? So might need maintenance. The maintenance cost is a relevant cost, definitely. Kasi kung hindi mo masyadong ginagamit yung boat, car, and camper, then yes, maintenance cost. But sagad sila ng paggamit, therefore higher maintenance cost. Okay. Another thing that's not quantified is the happiness it derives out of the activity. There's no money involved on quantifying. Masaya siya eh pag nagdadak hunting trip siya. So, so the cost might be okay lang nagastahin kasi it gives him it so much joy. No? That's something that is not quantified in this decision. Now, let's change the decision na ngayon. No? What if the decision that we are looking at is whether or not Bill should give up hunting entirely? Okay? Remember, yung kaninang decision is whether Bill should um, do one more trip within the hunting season, right? Ito, iba yung alternatives. Ang alternatives is you pursue hunting or you give it up entirely. No? So at this point, if Bill did not hunt entirely, he would need to pay for, he would not need to pay for gas, oil, and tires, shotgun shells, no? And definitely the hunting license and the whiskey. They're all avoidable costs right now. Right? Okay. Next, in addition, he will be able to sell his camper and possibly pick up truck. The proceeds of which should be considered relevant in these decisions. No? Uh, the original costs of these items are not relevant, but their recent values remain relevant. No, because kung titigil ka na mag-hunting trip, therefore, wala ka ng silbi. Wala ng silbi ang mga gamit na yan. Pwede na yung ibenta. And if you sell it, then you receive incremental benefit. So I think the, 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 the why, I, why I explained it this way is that I want to emphasize the last bullet point. Where you a cost that is relevant in one situation can be relevant again in the next or a cost that is irrelevant in the others, other scenario may be relevant now. And so that's what we need to consider in looking at decisions. Another thing that we need to consider is that um, there are non-financial information that are um, that is taken into, into account by management. Not all decisions are governed by numbers. Sometimes, sometimes there are non-financial factors in play. For example, closing plans and laying off employees can hurt morale. No, you cannot quantify the effect of lower morale. So even though there's savings with respect to laying off employees, and that's a relevant benefit, it can be so that management is not willing to do it because it will cause low morale. Okay? And the impact of that is so, 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 so intangible. No, not very difficult to predict. Okay. The decision to outsource may reduce control over delivery time or product quality. When you outsource something, you don't have control over the quality of the product. You have to trust that they did their QAs there. Right. Offering discount prices to select customers may upset regular customers and tend them to take their business elsewhere. Or even that's customer management. Okay. Might be better to choose another customer over another, but your current customer, the lower margin is your most loyal customer. So it might be difficult to shift the business, even though financially it's better to go there. 
So therefore, your role as the management accountant is to provide the financial information. However, management's collective goal is to consider financial and non-financial information in these decisions. So an example, let's have some applications you know, on, on, on relevant cost analysis. Number one, how do manager, managers decide which products to produce and sell? No? So one of the major decisions of a company is which products to produce and sell. Obviously, right? It's a very difficult decision, but from the point of view of a management factor, these are some of the issues. So if manufacturing capacity is limited, managers must decide which products to produce. If you have all the resources in the world, you can produce unlimited quantities of oil. However, you know that you have constraints, right? If you have constraints, how, do you, how are you supposed to allocate constraints? It's one decision. Second is managers must also decide whether to drop products, departments, or territories that are not as profitable as desired. Ready, when you launched it last year or two years ago, but it's not working well. Should we drop it now or not? So those are some of the decisions that the company may face. Let's deal with the second item. So dropping unprofitable products and segments. So when you drop uh, a product or a business segment, by meaning you know, drop, you say in the abolish or what nang it closed down and it's an unprofitable product and segment. What are some issues that you need to look into? Number one, does the product or segment provide a positive contribution margin? Meron pa ba siya to contribute to business na contribution margin? We'll explain more of that later. Second, will fixed costs continue to exist even if the company dumps the product or segment? There are fixed costs that are in the profit and loss of that unprofitable segment. Are you going to save some costs because of closing this department? Or will these costs continue to exist? Kasi hindi naman sila pwedeng i-break or hindi sila pwedeng ma-refund. Are there any direct fixed costs that can be avoided if the company drops the product? Will dropping product or segment affect sales of the company's other products? Kasi pwede yun na complementary pala sila. Products. So when you drop one product, indirectly there's an effect on the other. And what will the company do with the feed manufacturing space or storage space? No, meron ba siyang ibang silbi or use? No, these are some aspects that needs to be considered. Let's look at this example. Okay, the example of evaluating or dropping products or segments. Number one, so we have smart touch company. There's two products, the standard table and the premium tablet. No, standard tablet yan and the premium tablet. Now, based on the budgeted income statement that we are looking at at the right side, we're seeing that the, the premium tablets are running a loss. No? The total, total net operating income of the company is 231,000. The standard tablet's operating income is 236. And the premium tablet is losing money. There's an operating loss of 5,000. The question is, Ruby, sarana natin. So should the company drop the premium tablets like in the first place? Now, what we need to do is identify what are the relevant costs and benefits of dropping the premium tablets line. So therefore, what are our alternatives? Our alternatives is to keep the premium tablets line or drop it. Drop the premium tablets. Now, if we drop the premium line, what are the avoidable costs or foregone income from such a move? Okay. When you drop the premium tablets line, you will, of course, lose the net sales revenue. Right? That's the foregone income. You will lose $230,000 of revenue from selling the premium tablets. So that's, that's obvious. Okay? So that's a relevant cost for you because you've foregone meron kang na lose na income or na lose na revenues so obviously that's relevant because if you stay the same or stay poor you should have earned two thirty thousand dollars but you're losing it so therefore it's a relevant item okay second there are some avoidable costs if you drop the premium tablet line 
What do you avoid? Of course, you avoid you avoid valuable costs. Okay? So therefore, it's an avoidable cost and therefore it's a relevant cost. What are the costs that we will avoid? We will avoid variable costs with $140,000. So, and therefore, in the final analysis, okay, so in, the, in the analysis based on this case, no, you will lose the contribution margin that's worth 90,000. Why? Because you will forego the income, so mawawala yung 230, mawawala rin naman yung cost to 140. In effect, yung nawala sa'yo ay yung contribution margin, which is $90,000. No? So, what will clinch this decision is whether there are avoidable fixed costs that we will that will add on to the cost savings. Kasi you will lose the contribution margin, so you will lose the inflow, so bad yun, right? Pero worth it na malus mo yung inflow na 90,000 if may matitipid kang fixed cost na more than 90,000. Right? So if all costs, so if you see the fixed cost, no, total fixed cost is 95,000. Okay? Now, if you will save all of those fixed costs, no, then it becomes an avoidable cost. And if it's avoidable, it's an inflow, essentially, para siyang foregone cost. So, natipid mo yan. So, if you are able to save the entire 95,000 fixed cost, then it's worth pursuing dropping premium tablets. Why? Because you, even though you will lose 90,000 contribution margin, you will save 95,000 of costs. In effect, no, the net operating income effect your decision is 5,000 additional income, which is equivalent to the 95,000 fixed cost savings less 90,000 contribution margin that you lost because you closed the premium tablets. Okay. So let's assume that the company makes the premium tablets line in the same plant using the same machinery as the standard tablets, no? but we'll save on all fixed selling costs. Okay. So, ibig sabihin, ang sinasabi lang niya, dalawa kasi yung component ng fixed cost, manufacturing and selling and admin. Ang sinasabi niya, hindi siya makakatipid ng manufacturing. Why? Because it's the same machinery that's being used for standards. So, ibig sabihin, matitenga lang yun, you'll have to, you still have to pay for it for the manufacturing costs. Okay. But you will save on all fixed selling costs kasi wala ka nang ibibenta and therefore wala nang selling costs. Right? So therefore, you will save 25,000. So looking at the table at the, this side, okay, uh, you have work on revenue of 230,000. Of course, that's a negative impact of profit. But you avoided variable costs. So you have savings of 140,000. Then you also avoided the fixed cost of 25,000, which is the selling and admin costs. Okay. The net profit impact of this decision is 65,000 deduction. Therefore, your recommendation as a management accountant is to not pursue the closure of the premium target line. No? So in the short term, many fixed costs remain unchanged in total. I mean, that's the reality. Usually, a lot of the fixed costs are committed costs already that you cannot break. And therefore, in the real world, it's usually fixed costs are usually unchanged. Okay. Um, allocated fixed costs are irrelevant because regardless of whether you incur it or not, it's going to be, uh, regardless of uh, opening or closing the uh, line, the product line, still going to be uh, spent. Okay. So if you look at a decision tree or decision model, okay, for in the, for a decision to drop a product or segment, you know, if the lost revenues exceed total cost savings, you drop the unprofitable product or segment. Now, if the lost revenues naman are less than the total cost savings, then you drop you know, the product and the savings. Okay. 
uh, the the product line. Another application of relevant costs is our make or buy or outsourcing decisions. So many companies choose to outsource products or services because probably manufacturing is not their, not their, uh, not their core competency. No. So we outsource it to others who can make the product for them. Okay. So the decision entails making a product in-house or buying the same product elsewhere. Also, isn't it? Okay. So, what are the considerations of management? Number one, you need to consider how do the company's variable costs compare to the outsourcing costs. Also, if there are avoidable fixed costs, if the company outsources, you need to consider it. If you have a fixed cost for outsourcing it, then why not? So be it. And third, what can the company do with the free manufacturing capacity? Um, when you free up manufacturing capacity, you can do something with the space, and therefore you can earn additional income. So those are some of the relevant items in this decision. Let's look at this example. So in this case, tablets need casing, which the company can either purchase from a third party or manufacture in-house. So we're talking about whether a specific item, which is casing. Okay. By purchasing the casings, the company can avoid all variable manufacturing costs. Okay. However, the company will have to pay, of course, the variable outsourcing costs. You have to buy it from the outside. Okay. No? So let's look at the uh, information here upstairs. So if, the, if you make the casings, no? How much are you going to spend? In the casings, sabi sa information above, you'll have to spend fifteen thousand dollars for direct materials, seven two for direct labor, and thirteen two for manufacturing overhead, and therefore thirty six thousand. And then you talk to the outsourcing company, and your company is saying that, well, I can, I can make the product, and the cost of that product is twenty one dollars. Now multiply that by 2,400 casings, then the total cost of outsourcing is 50,400. So, so if you look at the last column, that's the differential analysis. Okay. In the differential analysis, if you outsource, you are going to save on variable costs. So you save 156, you save 72, and you save 13,200. That's why they're positive there because Potentially, there are savings, so additional units of profit. However, by saving direct material, direct labor, and overhead, you will have to spend on buying the component from a third party, and you will have to spend 50,400 for that. And therefore, in your incremental analysis or differential analysis, the total impact of outsourcing the product is 14,000 negative. And therefore, Outsourcing is not, is not the most profit activity. So based only on variable cost, the lower cost alternative is to manufacture the casings in-house. Because the savings from variable costs of direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing already is not enough to cover for the purchase cost of outsourcing. However, the company can avoid if the company can avoid some fixed costs by outsourcing the casings, then it may affect the decision. Okay. So let's assume that the management can reduce fixed cost by twelve thousand by outsourcing the casings. probably less security guards for the warehouse, for example. So outsource then your production line, pwede nang waglagyan ng guards. Or pwede nang maglagyan ng janitor. So those could be uh, fixed costs. So in this case, if you look at that, the last column, you know, the last column of our uh, table there, you have uh, you have 15, 6, 7, 2, and 13, 2, which are the saved variable costs. You also pay fixed cost of 10,000. And we compare that against that 
cost of purchases, which is 50,400. So in this case, even though there's a 12,000 savings for overhead costs, fixed overhead costs, it's still not enough to justify outsourcing. Because the impact is 2,400 on the uh, operating income. So the decision rule is if the differential costs of making the product exceed the differential cost of outsourcing, then you have to outsource okay? or buy the products from the third party. Now, if the differential cost of making the product are less than the differential cost of outsourcing, then you do not outsource and make it in-house. I'd like to extend that example because we have a third example. No, because the company actually has three alternatives. Number one is to use the facilities to make the casings. Number two, buy the casings, but leave the facilities idle. Okay. And number three, no, buy the casings and use the facilities to make new products. Okay. Because if you have a production line that is open, you can use it for other products. Right? So, you can use it additional. So in this case, the company should buy the casings from the third party and use the feed manufacturing capacity to make the product. Because in this case, there is a new product, you know, wherein they have new profit from the new product. So if you make the casings, the cost is 48,000. If the facilities remain idle, the cost is 50,400, which is the cost of the, uh, cost of the outsourcing. No? And then, there will come expected profit from whatever it is that you can earn out of the feed space. That, that earnings is a relevant cost or relevant benefit. So I'd like to amend this further. No? Aside from checking these two items, you need also to check whether idle facilities can be used for other purposes. If yes, we need to include the incremental income from such repurpose in the analysis. So the differential cost for making the product you know, should be um, considered versus the differential cost of outsourcing and the incremental income from the feed space because you outsourced it. There, so in this video, we're able to discuss the items. Number one, identify relevant and irrelevant costs and benefits. Number two is to prepare an analysis showing whether product lines or other business segments should be added or dropped. And number three, to prepare a make or buy or an outsourcing analysis. Okay, thank you and uh, looking forward to the next video.